Okay, fingers crossed that this time we don't have any challenges with our audio. That was wild. I have never yeah. seen that before. Okay, we'll give a couple seconds here for people to join. Hopefully they'll find mm -hmm. the, the new link over here. And in the meantime, we can uh, admire the plant that I added to the background. <laughs> oh, beautiful. There we go. Hi, welcome back, everyone. Hello. Martin, Michael, Stormer, Hi. Ahmed. Hello. Where is everybody? Where are you coming to us live from? <laughs> And I saw some of your questions uh, oh, on yeah. wanting to become cuddler and all that. Well, I promise that we will answer all of those um, during our live stream today. Gosh, that light is like falling so beautifully on you. <laughs> oh, you just look so glowy. <laughs> from Sweden, from Scotland, Whoa. from South Carolina. Hi, Zara. Evansville, mm. Indiana. That's Brooklyn. pretty close. Cape Cod, Denmark, Florida, oh, yeah. Matthew. Montana. Hi from to hi Tony. Hi, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy girls make the best cuddlers. All right. <laughs> we got one vote. <laughs> First time viewer. Oh, uh, thank you, Stefan. Or Stefan. Stefan. Steven, Louisiana, South Africa. Oh, cool. Florida. I'm originally from Louisiana. All yeah, right. we're in Louisiana. That moves. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're both here up in Chicago. Yes. Healthy meaning padded. Like <laughs> Thick, I think is is the term that we yeah. generally hear here in the, use in the in the states. <laughs> Jasmine saying hi, Sean. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Mark. Hi, Kevin. Oh yes, welcome. Come on, come Yay. on. Thank you so much. Well, Sean and I have actually been friends for many years. Yes, yes. I met Sean when I first moved to Chicago, and right off the bat, as soon as I met Sean, I hired you as a mm -hmm. professional cuddler. And we're gonna talk, let's just start right there. All right. So what is professional cuddling? Yeah, professional cuddling is essentially just giving people the opportunity to spend time, an hour plus, with a professional who um, may cuddle them, snuggle them, hug them, or simply just work on boundaries and like talking about what they want. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. Why would someone come to see a professional color? Good question. Many reasons. <laughs> like some people just like really need some good, good hugs, mm -hmm. you know, and they've been missing it, especially people who like may um, be like visiting from out of town and things like that, or may have newly moved to a different area. Um, also, some people like want some hugs and some snuggles and things like that, but they want to make sure that it's like clear that it's professional you know mm -hmm. and that that like there's clear where the line is they know they don't have to cuddle up with a friend and then question later like is this ah, person gonna want to have sexy time was there more you know? to yeah. it are they hoping it becomes exactly. more am i hoping it becomes more exactly yeah gotcha. like, we'll talk about exactly where the line is so that way you know it's completely platonic i love that yeah, yeah. someone just asked what the chemical is that hugs release you yeah know, like, oxytocin talk? oxytocin yeah the love <laughs> <laughs> which is fantastic yeah it can yeah oxytocin is a big reason why a lot of people do like cuddles because it can like help reduce your heart rate reduce stress you know help you to feel more connected to people and more at peace in your life yeah but people don't know is that oxytocin is actually like the the answer to cortisol yeah or the antidote to cortisol cortisol exactly. being the stress hormone that gets mm -hmm. released when we're stressed out and mm -hmm. like we're stressed out about a lot of stuff nowadays. Like we're stressed out by our taxes, by the weather, by the traffic. You know, anytime that you get into the car, it can be a little bit of stress, right? Yeah. Um, even just like, just in your day to day life, there's stress to think about. We're, we can be stressed about stuff that hasn't happened yet, that happened mm -hmm. yesterday, right? And when we're stressed all the time, cortisol builds up in our system. It's very challenging to decrease the amount of cortisol that's present yeah. in our system. And by the way, having too much cortisol can prevent you from having orgasms. It can prevent you from having erections. It can cause uh, it can cause early ejaculation because of the tension in the body. Oh, that makes sense. So yeah, cortisol moves blood to your fingers and your toes, right? Oh. Fight or flight. Yeah. So when you're stressed, your body gets ready to like oh, fight man. it out. And what is it pulling blood away from? Your head, mm. your throat, your heart, your belly, mm. and your genitals. Like all the important stuff that we want yeah. to be oxygenated and oxytocin is like the anti-cortisol but yeah. not everyone has access to 
like hugs and cuddles right. and things that release oxytocin mm-hmm. and even people who do still come see professional yeah. cuddles. like when I came to see you I actually mm-hmm. felt a little bit guilty because I like cuddled mm-hmm. my partner that morning and then I left out of bed and went it. straight to come see yeah. you and kept cuddling <laughs> but one of the reasons that I came to see you is because I like when I make a recommendation to somebody mm-hmm. whether it's here on YouTube or whether it's um, um, a client that's yeah. seeing me one on one, like I, I only like to recommend things that I've tried myself. Of course. And I thought it would be really, really helpful for a lot mm. of people, and my clients are men who are often really touch starved. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about like what, what that like what the people that you see and mm-hmm. and the the impact that what you do has on them. Yeah. So like for a lot of people, like touch starvation is just like a huge part of their lives and they may not even realize that it's negatively impacting them. You know, they may not realize the amount of stress that they're carrying or how isolated they're feeling just because they just do it. You know, it's just part of how they live their lives, but they definitely can see a lot of relief, you know, experience a lot more freedom in their lives if they do find some ways to regularly receive some touch, you know, Mm. regularly get those touch needs met. I mean, we know that like with babies, you know, like, like failure to thrive and stuff. It's like yeah, a big thing. We and need touch even as babies. Yeah, and like that doesn't change when we're adults. Like we don't all of a sudden get cured of that, that thing. And that never need us. touch again. Yes, and never need right? skin to skin contact. Right? We still need skin to skin contact. It's not just a want, it's a need. Mm, uh, Mark just wrote as a combat veteran mm. with PTSD, it's hard to shut it off. And I don't know exactly what he meant by it, but I, I imagine that. Um, touch and physical touch and cuddling might be helpful for people with PTSD, yeah. not just because of the physical aspects, but because of the negotiation and the totally. consent part and the, mm-hmm. the like safety that is created. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For a lot of people, it's really tough to, uh, to engage um, with touch, with, especially with strangers, like, because they may have specific ways that they need to be approached. They may oh, not right. like certain parts of their bodies to be leaned on or rubbed against because of negative experiences in the past. And it could potentially be triggering and so it's important to think about that 100 percent, and okay. and that was for me you know even mm-hmm. though i'm a sex coach i talk about sex yeah. for a living um a lot of people don't know this about me but i used to have a lot of problems touching strangers mm. um like even hugging strangers just like and, and if any friend like wanted to cuddle with me even if they were uh, you know it didn't matter if there was any like sexual chemistry between mm-hmm. us like if any friend wanted to cuddle with me i would instantly sort of like jerk back yeah. because i didn't believe that i could set firm boundaries boundaries and mm-hmm. actually tell someone like okay I'm good with cuddling but it's I don't want it to be sexual I don't want you to touch me here or there anywhere but instead yeah. of having that conversation I would just be like nope I don't cuddle yeah in fact once I was uh I my friends were doing a cuddle puddle which if you're not Aww. familiar is like a bunch of people sort of cuddling together and like a big human mess <laughs> and um they asked me if I would come join so they're all like on my bed uh, which was a twin bed. It was, there was already like five <laughs> people on it. And they're like, Caitlin, come cuddle. And I was like, I don't like cuddling. I don't like cuddling. I don't want it. And then I, they convinced me, peer pressure. I got yeah. on the bed. And as soon as I put my knee on it, it broke. I, oh, no. I broke my own bed frame being peer pressured into cuddling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that obviously put me off cuddling for a lot yeah, longer. No. Yeah. <laughs> Every while I was like, I'm just done with cuddle. I think this was a sign. I wasn't mad for it. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. But yeah, I promise if you come and see me as a professional cuddler, then like I'll put us in a situation where we won't break the Yeah, it's gonna be know? safe. We'll figure it out. John's yeah. already thought about it. You're not gonna put in a position practice. where you're like yeah. ah! <laughs> so let's talk up a little bit about what it even looks like. So yeah. so walk me through a session. Mm-hmm. I I've been there, but let's let's walk through like after someone contacts a professional yeah. cuddler, when they meet, what happens? Yeah, so there's two main um, main groups of people. Like there are the people who are super all about like let's let's touch let's let's just cuddle from dip from the second that I come into the to the door. And then there's people who are kind of touch averse and kind of more like we you know the way it used to be. You know who might want some support and help in kind of getting out of that and figuring mm-hmm. out ways they can receive more touch. And so prior to us actually even like getting in the door, um, I do talk to them. You know over oh, um, the telephone usually. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and talk to them about the types of touch that they want, you know, or don't want, you know, and the, what could be most supportive for them in the environment. Then once the, I've, you know, figured out which group they kind of fall into, then from there I can create like an action plan to try to help them to, you know, achieve their goals. And so it might be if they're in the first group, you know, like greeting them and, and seeing if they're like open to a hug right away and like snuggling them in. And then we might like, um, transition right away and go over to like my little color cuddle area with the mattress and like snuggle up the whole time you know and some people like pretty much just like fall asleep right away mm -hmm. you know and like that's totally cool yeah, too such can be yeah. sort of like hypnotizing oh, gosh, it's so you get so relaxed <laughs> and right yeah totally. and then yeah with um a lot of folks who are kind of like more getting into the idea of touching getting more comfortable with that and like wanting to work on their boundaries you know we might start with like um sitting on the couch you know they mm -hmm. might um check in and say like hey you know like I, I say can we hold hands you know we'll probably start there and then like after we hold holding hands can we hold hands yes I love <laughs> to hold hands <laughs> then um we might you know explore some some more touch you know and seeing like you know if we're comfortable like maybe eye gazing if we're comfortable like letting you know our shoulders touch or our knees touch things mm -hmm. like that to kind of get closer and move towards some of the um the other types of touch because it's like even just like holding hands just kind of grounds you, you mm -hmm. know, and just like, ah. And you know, I didn't even realize our knees were touching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. So what role does the communication and consent play? Because mm -hmm. I think it's a big part. consent mm -hmm. feels confusing for a lot of people, yeah. right? And it, it is very confusing, especially mm -hmm. the way that it's usually portrayed. It's like yeah. you have to have consent, but mm -hmm. people get the idea that it kind of ruins things. Yeah. And it's got, an, it's got a bad rep. Yeah, it does. And like, it's very hard to practice consent because who do you practice consent with? You know? Yeah, with me. <laughs> yeah. So, so how does that usually go for you? Yeah. So I, I definitely like to check in as much as possible. And I like people to know that at all times they can change their minds, you know, mm. that at all times that they can choose to say no or choose to ask for something different. You know, I also um, say that like, you know, they can give me a yes response. They can give me a no response if they are made or they're like I think I might possibly mm. then we're gonna take that as a no for the moment you know and they can revisit that later if they want to mm -hmm. you know just making it's sure not a know. hell yes it's, yeah. just, it's just a no and that's exactly. okay exactly well said yeah. yeah so just making sure people know that they have control you know at all times that they they get to be a choice and then for me too like I mean like very much they're, they're paying for my time you know I want to be supportive of them and I'm still a human being and you, you know so, right? yeah. and they so get I to hear just, you know that yeah. and respect your boundaries exactly as well. exactly and one of the things that i learned a lot during our session together mm -hmm. was the power of asking for what you want yeah and it's a lesson that i think all of us have to learn and learn and learn because yes. so many of us you know when we were little mm -hmm. we asked hey can i do this can i do that can i do yeah. that? you know and our parents or whoever took care of us like mm -hmm. had to say no sometimes right mm -hmm. and we eventually we sort of get conditioned that we can't always just ask for mm. what I want. But I remember when we were, had our session together, I said something like, um, would you like, would you be open to like scratching my head or something mm -hmm. like that? Because I always scratch people's heads Aww. and I never get yeah. mine scratched. Mm -hmm. And you were like, yes. And we <laughs> kind of like repositioned, you mm. scratched my head. And I just sort of like sunk in to that yeah. moment and felt really grounded and really, mm -hmm. you know, cared for. Oh, that's and, beautiful. And yeah, the ability to ask, so yeah. crucial. Thank you. Yeah, I love what you said too about like sinking in and relaxing into that moment because it can be hard sometimes to really relax into the moment if you don't know for sure that that person is like mm -hmm. an enthusiastic yes, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, how many times have you been with someone mm -hmm. sexually or otherwise yeah. where you sort of were like holding back because mm -hmm. you weren't totally sure were they good with what was happening or like did they, maybe they said they were good but maybe they like didn't look like they enjoyed it. <sighs> you know, someone wrote me the other day and said, um, I they, they were thanking me because they used to have premature ejaculation mm -hmm. and then they took my come when you want course and they don't have it anymore and he was like I can now he said he could last for an hour but he said after the first 10 minutes mm -hmm. his girlfriend looked really bored oh. and that was a he was like I wasn't expecting this yeah. I just thought if I could last a long time oh. 
uh, sex would automatically be a lot yeah. better. And I think that's part of like that's the communicate. That's that's yeah. when this still comes in of going. Okay, what would you like? Would you yeah. like me to play with your hair? Do you want to change positions? Do you want to get on? Right, like it could be. Do you mm-hmm. want to stop having sex and give each other massages, and then we'll come back to having sex mm-hmm. later? And that's the nice thing that he has now. He has the choice to do that. But yes. now, even though he doesn't have premature ejaculation, he's got a different problem. He's got to solve that instead. <laughs> So good, good problems. Good yes, problems, yes, sure. quality, but problem, problems. quality problems. Yeah. So let's talk about what, because we're talking right now about mm-hmm. non-sexual, mm-hmm. consensual touch. Yes. So mm-hmm. it's consensual, and that everybody mm-hmm. is um, is everybody is consenting, and we're creating, yes. we're co-creating the environment that mm-hmm. touch is happening in. And we're talking about non-sensual touch, but non. Sexual. Yes. So many ensuals in this conversation. I know, right? Sensual, consensual, <laughs> sexual. Um, so, so how does this conversation apply to sexual yes. touch? Yes, I love that you asked me that. I'm gonna let go of oh, your yes, hand. Yes, Thank yes. you. I'm just getting warm. warm. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm getting warmed up. I don't know. Um, oh, I'm just like. Oh yeah, people are asking questions. I'm, so I haven't been uh, watching all of your questions, but. Um, we'll definitely answer those in just a moment. Yeah. yeah. So hang yeah. on to them for just a second, please. <laughs> yeah. The um. Yeah. The um. As far as it applying to sexual touch, I feel like the negotiation aspects, the consent aspects, the boundaries, mm-hmm. like all of that is a big part of it. You know, like you were talking about with that person. You know, like checking in and seeing, like, hey, you know, like I can last forever now. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, like I'm so happy for this person, but at the same time, like, yeah, like, do you want me to? Right. You know? What do we want to do? With that right, now that exactly. I have the stamina and I have the choice and I can choose between a quickie mm-hmm. or an hour, yeah. what do we want to do with that? Right. Like what options are available to us? You know, being mm-hmm. able to negotiate that is so important. And I feel like um sex can feel so high stakes at times. You yes. know? Like yes. we all have so much baggage around it that mm-hmm. it can feel at times impossible to like learn how to negotiate and learn boundaries and consent in that um situation, you know? Yeah. And so having totally. platonic touch where it's like, okay, today we're we're just gonna hold hands or today we're just going to like give each other massages and being able to negotiate around that can make it more possible for you to negotiate in the bedroom without all the baggage, without all the feelings of insecurity and things like that, because you just have practice doing those things. Mm-hmm. You'll practice not taking it so personally. You'll practice yeah. acknowledging that like when this person says no, maybe they're just taking care of themselves. Right. You know? Right. And maybe that's not no to everything. Maybe that's yes. just no to this one thing. Mm-hmm. And they might not want me to touch their hair, but maybe they're okay with yeah. exchanging back rubs. Right. And I'm so glad that you said that because mm-hmm. sex can feel so yeah. heavy. It can feel I've I've been there, you know, especially if sex is like a problem in your relationship. Mm-hmm. And then like every time, every single time, you're like, is sex gonna happen? Mm-hmm. Is it gonna be good enough? Am I gonna be good enough? Or am I gonna feel rejected? Right. Am I gonna feel disappointed? Am I gonna feel like I've let my lover down? Am mm-hmm. I gonna feel upset with myself oh, at the gosh, end I of this? All of this I've stuff. been there, yeah. yeah. Right? It's hard. Sex is it's so hard. and at its best. Sex can be fun, yes. and it can be light, and mm-hmm. it can be airy, and it can be just like liberating. Yes, oh yes, it can be so yeah. liberating, and when we don't take it super seriously, mm-hmm. and I think that that's where we can really introduce this piece about consent and mm-hmm. communication, yes. because often that's per- that's that's portrayed as very very serious. Consent yeah, is very right? serious, and it is serious. It is, and <laughs> when we treat it like dar, 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 serious, right? serious, instead mm-hmm. of like just like one more part of you know, it's, it's serious to exchange body mm. fluids. It's ex- it's serious to make babies. It's yeah. serious to give each other orgasms. And it's not just serious. It's also right. fun. It's, it's also mm. light. It's also pleasurable. Right. And consent and having that conversation and saying what you want and what you don't mm-hmm. want can be a part of that. And I think it's really about totally. how you approach it. Are you, Absolutely. Are you approaching it light? Are you right. approaching it heavy? <laughs> right? Yeah. If you're not yeah, coming to like to have some fun, to have some enjoyment, to connect with your partner, then, you know... You might want to reevaluate your reasons for coming to the bedroom. Totally. And I think you made it at this point earlier, and it's really important. A lot of the time, touch is seen as inherently sexual, mm-hmm. right? Like any time that two people get yeah. together and touch bodies, it's like almost like we're conditioned to be like that sexual. I was like that. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, my friend wants to cuddle with me. Like next yeah. is penetration, you know? Right. Like, <laughs> there was no sort right. of differentiation between the different kinds of mm-hmm. touch. And so I think it's really vital that we practice non-sexual touch. Yeah. Because first of all, we all need it. 
It mm-hmm. feels great. Like we said, it decreases mm-hmm. stress. It's beneficial for our health. It's beneficial mm-hmm. for our relationship. And we get this whole, we get this range of options mm-hmm. that isn't otherwise available. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well said. Yeah, like, um, I don't know where, where you went to college, but like for me, like where I went to college, it was very much like if you went to someone's dorm room and you got a massage, then... It was, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. There was no was such thing happen. as a massage without right. sex. Like, and like a struggling college student, a lot of us couldn't afford like professional real massages. True. And so it was like we had to choose between either having sex with the person who offered us yeah, massages right. or so never right. getting massages. Like, that's not cool. You're so right. And it's it kind of sucks because that is our, that's how we've been conditioned. If yeah. somebody offers me a massage, uh-huh. they're going to want to have sex with me. I know. And like, and, and also it's because sex is so shame right like sex has such a stigma around it we can't just be like hi i'd like to have sex with you do you want to come over Mm. you know i think it would be great if we could do that right i don't want to be like let's have massages and then Mm. also have sex like how about that or like let's have a massage and see if we do want to have sex like Mm -hmm. i am into that i love that yeah yes a (laughs) hundred percent um okay let's Let's really quickly talk yeah. about how to practice this in your relationship. So, like, yes. I asked Sean to come up with three steps mm-hmm. for how you can practice non non sexual mm-hmm. consensual touch, aka cuddles, yes. in your relationship. So, Sean, what is step one? Yeah. So, step one is just really understanding your why. You know, finding um, some kind of way that you want to touch your partner, that you want to connect with your partner, and getting clear on why you want to do that and why? what's enjoyable for you yeah. around that. So what's that you in it can, for you? Like, really appreciate that in the moment as just that thing, you totally, know? So if yeah. it's like a long hug or if it's spooning or if it's like playing with your partner's hair, just like enjoying that thing, scratching your partner's totally. head, you know, rubbing their feet, like just liking that thing as a contained unit. In yes, itself, you know? exactly. Why do you want to mm-hmm. do that thing? Do you want to feel more connected? Yes. Do you want to feel loved? Do you want yeah. to let your partner know that they are appreciated? Mm-hmm. Y'all give us a thumbs up if you if you mm-hmm. like that, by the way. Give us a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> If, if you could use some um, some understanding around touch, by the way. Yeah. Um, okay, so understanding your why and then also asking what it is that you want to do, mm-hmm. right? So do you want to give a foot rub? Yeah. Do you want to? I remember touch goes in both directions. Like, Do you want to have your feet rubbed? Right. Because there's, there, there's giving and receiving totally. in touch also. And, and I can give so, for my pleasure. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I'm so yeah. And sometimes giving is receiving. A lot of the times, you know, like it can feel really, really good to like give a massage to your partner. Totally, like, it can feel like fill up your tank. Yes, yeah. Sometimes it's very filling mm-hmm. for you to be the one that's giving yeah. and they're receiving. Mm-hmm. Yep, totally. All right. So that was step one: is the yes. why and the what. What is step two? Yeah, um, just communication, you know, making sure that you have consent, making sure that you're negotiating, you know, that people are actually getting the types of touch that they really want, you know, Mm -hmm. and that, you know, you're not like laying in this one way because that's the way you always lay, even though your partner, you know, might be really sore from the gym or even though they may have injured themselves on slipping on the ice or whatever, like you get to change it up, you get to negotiate and figure out what is like mutually beneficial what feels really good for both of you totally yeah and let's i want to address something real quick yeah, somebody please. just um somebody just asked you a question about how you communicate about this mm-hmm. oh and side note i like that you all put thumbs up in the comments but i meant click the thumbs up button oh. <laughs> but you could do both i really yeah. love both yes thank you for all yeah that's um, good for us to know do you mm-hmm. want to demonstrate a quick little yes. communication so you can see would you guys like that would you like to see a communication on like how you can negotiate this stuff okay so let's say in this in this we're partners let's just mm-hmm. say that um and let's say that we're, we're romantic partners and like one of us is is getting home from work. Mm. Okay. Um, let's say, and I'll greet you. When, you're getting home from work, and I'll greet you. Okay. Hey, babe. Hey. Welcome home from work. Hello. Hello. Open we, arms. We yeah. both did this. Probably means we would like to hug. Yeah. I know you had a hard day at work. Would yeah. you like some physical touch? I would love some. Thank you. Awesome. What, did, what, what would feel good for you right now? Yeah. I, 
I would um I would really love to like like scratch your head if you're up for that. I would love that. Cool. One thing though, um, yeah. my hands feel like really sensitive today, okay. so you do it really light. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, Thank cool. You. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for letting me know. Like I would hate to feel like I'm hurting you. I appreciate it so much, and that feels so good. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank that you. Was yes. <laughs> Roll play. <laughs> See, see how simple that was? And it felt wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And I was giving them an opportunity. I was like, yeah. hey, you just got home from your day. Mm. What would feel good? And their answer was to touch me. So yeah. notice how it can go really totally. in both direct in all directions. Like yeah. giving and receiving. And it, notice that there's like all kinds of possibilities too. Because it's not just a head scratch. It's like, yes, you can scratch everywhere but here. Yes, you can scratch mm. every direction but hard. Yes, yeah. you can just... There's just like, there is an infinite number of ways that two plus bodies yes. can interact with each other. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so totally. And we're cutting ourselves off when we're not getting super creative Ugh. about it. Well said. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And notice that so we, we actually kind of touched on step three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Check in, you know, making sure that you are not only, you know, like saying like, can I touch your head? But like, you know, letting your partner know like, yes, that feels really good. Mm -hmm. Or like, actually, can we adjust it this way? Or like, honey, are you still comfortable with this? Like, does this yes. feel really good? You know, yeah. would you, would you like it if I like, you know, move down to your neck or would you like a shoulder massage instead? You know, mm -hmm. like just like checking in. In periodically not because you have to but because you really want your partner to enjoy this touch 100%. you know you want to like both have a pleasant experience you yeah know? exactly and you brought up one more thing that i want to touch on yeah please <laughs> Touch puns. Um, which is touching with intention. Yeah. You know, because if I'm touching you, but my brain mm. is thinking about what I've got to do tomorrow or the groceries yeah. or whatever, I'm not really intentional. Mm. And and you'll be able to feel that in yeah. my fingertips. You can really feel that. We That's as so humans true. are so responsive to the yeah. energy that another person is bringing with us or to us, mm. right? So what kind of intention would you recommend for people or how do they stay intentional as they're touching someone? Yeah. So like that kind of goes back to our first thing of like, you know, like the why and like what you want to accomplish. Like, do you want to feel really connected to your partner? You know, do you want to help your partner relax at the end of the day? Like you talked about, you know, like if you are clear on that intention kind of going in, you know, then mm -hmm. you get to occasionally just like do a mental check in with yourself. Yep. You know, am maybe, I with my intention? Yeah. Am I staying present? with this person if I'm not what do I need to do right. if I'm <laughs> not present because my arm is numb maybe we need to change <laughs> position right and I'm not saying you have to like just keep running that script over and over again totally. <laughs> that would get kind of annoying after a while but like you know just periodically you know like every you know 5-15 minutes depending on what you're doing you know just check in with yourself and see like okay does this still feel good am I still enjoying so this does this yeah. still seem like something that my partner is into and like what they want to gain out of it like you know are they still getting that thing you know 100% like is my partner's um like if I'm trying to relax my partner like is my partner like are their shoulders sneaking down you know or there is their is breathing? their body relaxing yes, yes right? you can kind of tell those subtle mm -hmm. things yeah and it invites us to really really notice what's going on with our partners which then allows us to really connect with them in some new ways you know and like allows them to feel really seen and appreciated and yes. valued yes when yes. We can like notice like what's going on with them and be like more intentional, be more present mm -hmm. and like feel yes, yeah, the like, biggest this gift because yes. it's not just about what feels good to the touch, it's also like uh, the pleasure of having someone just be totally with you. Like, how many of us, how good does it feel when someone is just present, giving you their mm -hmm. attention and their focus? And I'm sorry, I'm not doing it right now because there's a cat trying to interrupt our live stream. <laughs> It's not being very present. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's answer some questions. Someone yeah. said that it's all about timing, and I couldn't mm. agree more. Yeah. Someone said that they're very sensitive. I'm sorry, your comments disappear very quickly. So I'm not yeah, trying to I'm ignore sorry. them. It's just that sometimes they just pop up, and then they're gone. <laughs> Someone said they like having the inside of their arms touch. Aww. Feel if we cuddle with the partner, it will always lead to romance and sex. Well, not mm. always, and that's part of the... Uh, that's part of the communication yeah. is being very clear before we go in. I definitely do not 
I'm definitely not in the mood for sex. Yeah, and so like for me, like with my partner, um, it's something that we've both had some practice communicating around and that we can do now. Um, is like set aside these times to, for touch that's purely platonic, you know? Mm -hmm. And we also, like with a lot of people, like they know that like, hey, if we're doing this, like this touch in our bedroom, then it's gonna turn into sex. But if we do it in the living room, then maybe it ah, doesn't. Ah, so you can set um, a, yeah, a space container. Exactly. Yeah. You also uh, might, you know, want to try setting aside a little block of time to just start off with at a time when you know you don't you can't you know jump into the sexiness of it so like maybe if you know that like your mother-in-law is coming over at four o'clock oh, then right. maybe at 3 30 you decide to have like a 15 minute you know cuddle cuddle date mm -hmm. for that time mm -hmm. and you just like sit with each other you just like play in each other's hair you just like enjoy each other's you know touch and hold hands and all of that cuteness and you know it's not going to go any farther because you don't want your mother-in-law walking in on you, uh -huh. you know, half naked. Yeah, so there you go. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Well, we are at our half hour. I know, so right? Fast. Oh my god. Yeah, but like, yeah. If you have more questions, feel free to like comment like afterwards. And, and how like, can people yeah. find you? Oh yeah, good question. So people can definitely find me on my website, um, ourtouchpoints.com. Um, we'll also link my YouTube channel as well, so that you can check out more of my videos. Yeah, what too. if they search? What will they search in YouTube to find you? Yeah, they can search um, Sean and Embody Consent or Sean uh, Touch Points. Sean, touch points. Don't yes. go. I know. I don't want to go. Oh, Everyone, so you give you. thumbs. Click touch. How about you touch the thumbs up before we get out of here? Touch mm. the thumbs up. Yeah. Gently touch it. <laughs> Let us know that you appreciated Sean coming on. And oh, if someone wanted to become a professional cuddler, oh, where yes. would you send them? Yeah, thank you so much for asking. So, like, I personally, um, along with, with Jasmine of Tanjay Wellness, who just asked, <laughs> have some, some training classes for people who are interested in that. So, you can sign up for my um, my email list through my website. Um, you also can check out, like, cuddlist.com as well for some information. You can find a cuddler at cuddlist.com, too. If you're in the Chicagoland area, then hit me up, and I'm happy to yes. work with you or refer you to a friend if we don't seem like a good match. Yes, absolutely. Sean is an amazing wealth of information mm -hmm. on, all, on all things cuddles, all things touch, all things yeah. consent. If you're in Chicago, please find their website, hit them up, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you have you have a network of people that you know yes. across the country, um, and you can absolutely make referrals. Mm -hmm. um, and they, Tanja asked, uh, should they be certified? Should they be certified? Yes. 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 Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, certification is very important because you want to know that the person was professionally trained totally. and that they are going to maintain the rules and boundaries that you want to maintain. Yes, in absolutely. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for touching the thumbs up button. That helps other people Aww. see this content on YouTube. It'll yeah. help Sean's content get boosted. Totally. Thank you. Uh, please find them out in the world. And thank you. Can I give you a hug? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. It was great. Thanks. Thanks to everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>